Hello and welcome to this graph neural network series. This first part is a simple introduction to graph data and the idea behind graph neural networks. The second part will go into detail on how exactly they work and finally in part 3 we will build a simple model for predictions with molecule data. We will use PyTorch Geometric for that. So let's get started. Before we talk about graph neural networks, or short GNNs, we should first have a look at graphs. A graph simply consists of nodes or vertices and connections between these nodes, which are called edges. The information about these connections in a graph can be represented in an adjacency matrix. The elements of the matrix indicate connected nodes with a 1 and disconnected nodes with a 0. Besides adjacency matrices, there exist also other ways to represent the connections, such as adjacency lists, but for now we will continue using the matrix representation. Finally, the nodes or edges can have further properties, which are called node features and edge features. Let's assume this graph is a molecule and the nodes are atoms. Then the node features, which are the blue bars next to the nodes here, could be for example the atom type or the number of protons. For the edge features, which are indicated by the black bar, we can use further information such as the bond type. In the following, this is all you need to know about graphs to understand GNNs. Even though graph neural networks might be something new for you, you might already know that graph data exists in many areas. A lot of data sets with molecules are available in the area of medicine or pharmacy. These molecules are, as already mentioned, usually structured as a graph consisting of atoms and bonds. E-commerce companies usually use large knowledge graphs to build useful recommender systems that suggest interesting products or movies. Another self-explaining example are social networks such as Facebook, where the people stand for nodes which are connected in certain relationships. The people can have features such as age, gender, favorite music and so on. Finally, you can also find graph structures in 3D games where the objects are usually modeled as a polygon mesh, which is a collection of vertices, edges and faces. These were just a few examples to give you an idea of how much graph data is available. But what can you do with this graph data in machine learning sense? First of all, you can perform node level predictions. This simply means that you have a graph with unlabeled nodes and want to predict attributes about these nodes or classify them. GNNs, as we will see in a second, will use the information of the other nodes in the graph to infer on these unlabeled nodes. Another possibility is called link prediction, or also edge level prediction. Here you just predict whether there will be a connection between two nodes in the graph. This is for example used by companies to predict which customer is likely to buy which product next. So basically the connection between people and items. Finally. You can of course also use the whole graph as input and classify it or predict an attribute of interest. This is commonly done with molecule data, for instance if you want to identify if a molecule is a suitable truck. In the following I assume that you are familiar with the inner workings of neural networks as GNNs simply extend classical feedforward models. In the past there were a variety of other approaches to handle graphs, such as hand grafted features, as input for machine learning models. However, graph data has some interesting properties that make it difficult to work with. In a second we will find out how GNNs cope with all of these difficulties. As you might know, neural networks typically expect a fixed size input. This brings us to the first difficulty of graph data. The size and shape of a graph might change within a data set. This might also be true for other data types such as images but here you can simply resize, pad or crop the images to the same size. Such operations are not defined on graph data. If you have additional nodes or edges, you cannot simply remove them. Therefore, we need a method that can handle arbitrary input shapes. Another feature of graphs, which is called isomorphism in graph theory, says that two graphs that look different can still be structurally identical. If you flip the image on the left, you get an entirely new image. If you flip the graph on the left, however, the only thing that changes is the order of the nodes. The algorithm that is supposed to handle graph data, therefore, needs to be permutation invariant. This is actually also the reason why you cannot directly use the adjacency matrix as input for the feedforward network, 
as it is sensitive to changes in the node order. Finally, the structure of graphs is non-Euclidean. For images, you have a clear grid that can be expressed by x and y coordinates. Graphs are dynamic structures that might lay differently in the space and distance metrics, such as the Euclidean distance, are not clearly defined. For instance, you cannot really say how close node A and B are. Of course you can add 3D coordinates, but they do not incorporate the edge information between nodes. This is also the reason why the machine learning area around graphs is called geometric deep learning. The fundamental idea of GNNs is to learn a, for neural networks, suitable representation of graph data. This is also called representation learning. Using all the information about the graph, including the node features and the connections stored in an adjacency matrix, the GNN outputs new representations, which are also called embeddings, for each of the nodes. These node embeddings contain the structural as well as the feature information of the other nodes in the graph. This means each node knows something about the other nodes, the connection to these nodes and its context in the graph. The embeddings can finally be used to perform predictions. The way how you use them heavily depends on the machine learning problem you want to solve. For instance, if you want to perform node level predictions, you would simply use the node embedding of a specific unlabeled node to obtain a prediction. Let's assume this example graph has four labeled nodes and one unlabeled node which is white. Then you would simply use the embedding vector of this node and predict the node's label with it. If you want to perform graph level predictions, however, you would use all of the node embeddings, combine them in a certain way and get a representation of the whole graph. Alternatively, you can include pooling operations to iteratively compress the graph into a fixed size vector. This representation can then be used to run a prediction. Similar nodes, meaning nodes with similar features or in similar contexts, will lead to similar node embeddings. The same way, similar graphs will lead to similar graph embeddings using a GNN. The size of the node embeddings is a hyperparameter and can differ from the initial node feature size. Let's assume the graph input is a molecule again and the atom feature vectors have a size of 50. This means you have 50 properties such as the atom type or the number of protons available for each node. Then the embedding can for instance have a size of 128. However, these embedding values cannot directly be interpreted, as they are an artificial compound of the node and edge information within the graph. Finally, edge features can also be processed in a GNN and will be combined into these node embeddings. Within the graph neural network, you have several so-called message passing layers. These are the core building blocks of GNNs. They are responsible for combining the node and edge information into the node embeddings on the right. And how exactly this is done will be part of the next video. If you have questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. See you in the next video.